31. Wow. Roll call, you got that, Sarah? Thank you. Don't see any public comments. So we will move to the consent agenda. We have six action items on the consent agenda. Is there any board member that would like to edit this current agenda? Mm, no. If not, I will move that we approve the, the current consent agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Kevin. All those in favor, respond with aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Passed unanimously. Aye. Thank you. That might be Sally up there calling user one. Sally, did you? Or is it Hannah? Okay. It couldn't be Nick. The voice was a little too high. Okay, well okay. now Nick is showing. So I can't know. All right, we will move to special guests from the Spokane Youth and Senior Centers Association with a quarterly update. Tony Kane, welcome, Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Yep. <laughs> welcome. Hey. Doing today? Good. You have the pleasure of speaking into the microphone directly. <laughs> I'll try to get through this pretty quickly, but not too quickly. So if I'm going too quick, you say something. Uh, pleasure meeting you guys. I still need to meet some of you here, and I hear there's a few former North Central alumni here. Who who might that be? North Central, okay, okay. I think we may have talked about this briefly. <laughs> North Central, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna start. So when were you at North Central? <laughs> 20, 2012 graduate. Oh. <laughs> that was close to you. Gr yeah, oh, pretty close, right? Right in the neighborhood. <laughs> the following year, I believe. Yeah. No, I, did, I just had to ask. <laughs> So we'll kick off the meeting. So the first quarter of 2020, fourth quarter of 2023, we're going to start off. Uh, we had a participant total of 48,226 hours. So for the year of 2023, that resulted in 182,217 participation hours. Oh, wow. And then when we move on to slide two, uh, we have Q4 2023 totals for volunteers. Notably, if you look at Corbin, we have 830 volunteers with 400 and 287,000 hours. That's a pretty dang high, and I can imagine how much money they might be saving. Uh, when we look at total volunteers, we had 3,426, 17,336 uh, hours. And if you're wondering how much money will that save us, well, let's look down here. So 41,648 volunteer hours is equivalent to north of a million dollars, half a million dollars. So when you think about how much money 655,000 is to an organization, especially a nonprofit, uh, that's a lot of money saved. So we thank you, volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to the first slide, we have uh, Hilliard Senior Center. Woohoo! Uh, Q4 2023, we had 439 volunteers, uh, resulting in, well, contributing 2,438 volunteer hours. Now you're wondering, that's 7,466 participation hours. Pretty good. Uh, some notable events we had, holiday photo shoot, personally my favorite. Uh, we had the Craft Bazaar fundraiser, pancake feed fundraiser, and holiday photo shoot. Okay, we went through that, and the Hall Halloween costume party. So mm. some of these are some of our favorite events end of the year, bring out a lot of sense of community within our Hillier neighborhood. So if you're in the neighborhood, come check it out. Okay. Uh, moving on to the MLK Community Center. So seniors at the MLK Center play bingo every Wednesday, and they're able to take home a Donated prize. How cool is that? Oh. Project Joy. I uh, love these guys. They provide performers to different nonprofit senior centers and retirement centers in Spokane. Uh, so during the fourth quarter, forgive me. 
During the fourth quarter, Project Joy continued providing entertainment to the care and retirement community. This quarter, the performances included Veterans Day and the holiday programs. Uh, our entertainers, Project Joy, not me, really enjoyed supporting our veterans and spreading holiday cheer uh, to the many people they entertained. And we have the piano group next Wednesday. We would love for you guys to check it out, and we'll share it on social so you guys keep your eyes peeled. Uh, some of our performers who provided entertainment this quarter are pictured here. If we look, Lyle Morris, we have senior serenaders, uh, Spring Chicks, Grandpa Sound, that's who we have next Wednesday, uh, two great cats, and we just had them actually in January. Great performance. Mid-City Concerns, our members thrive on the vibrant energy and festive spirit that fills the air during every occasion. Be it the patriotic fervor of Veterans Day, the spooky excitement of Halloween, or the magical charm Christmas with Santa. Love whoever wrote that. Very creative. Uh, Mid-City. Northeast Youth Center, uh, my son goes there, so they, I know they do good things in the community. Uh, had a great end of 2023, and if you're wondering, for Thanksgiving, 26 families received a full Thanksgiving meal, and all nice. of their families were able to take home a turkey dinner. Wow. Uh, turkey. Nice. Turkey. Good. Okay. Chris Crocker for Coats for Kids donated a coat for every child at the center, over 100. Uh, if you haven't seen at the Northeast Youth Center, they do a pretty good job at helping those kids that attend mm -hmm. NEYC. It's a great help. Uh, thanks to the many generous donors, each family at Christmas, Ham, got ham and wrapped toys. How cool is that? Mm. Ten of the most needy families got gifts for their entire family. Oh. Uh, thanks to uh, BECU, was awarded $15,000 grant and $75,000 from Providence Foundation. Wow. West Central Community Center, during the fourth quarter of 2023, our kids were able to take weekly self-defense classes. That's pretty cool. Get creative at polka dot pottery. Participate in music lessons. I love it. West Central doing big things. Uh, and then we're moving on to Southside Community Center. Q4 2023 saw strong engagement with 10,156 attendees and 469 volunteers contributing 3,870 hours. That's pretty significant. Featured events including the Veterans Dinner and Christmas programs. Southwest Community Center, uh, strong, thank you. Had volunteers who contributed 1,309 volunteer hours with participants enjoying 3,000 801 participant hours. So it looks like they had a pretty fun time in the park when the weather was a lot better. And from what I'm hearing, the director lost a bet. Kid was able to drink water on top of their head. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, Sinto Senior Center and Corbin Senior Center. Uh, no report given. And thank you, board. Wow. Thank you for having me. And I look, it's a pleasure to have me. And I look forward <clears throat> to work with all of you. Oh, thank thanks, you very Tony. much, Tony. Well done. It's nice to meet you. You can come back every month. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, please do. It'll get better. <laughs> oh, oh, that was great. So normally at this time we would have the financial report, but rumor has it that Rich is having too much fun auditing 13th month ad adjustments and, and doesn't have one for us. So we'll move on to special discussion action items. <laughs> Nominating committee, Barb Ritchie. Take it away, Barb. Oh, cool. Gosh, that seems, am I even on? Oh, I am on here. I was wondering where I was at. I will want to first thank Doug Kelly, Sally Lodato, and Kevin Brownlee for serving on this year's nominating committee. I have the pleasure of saying that Bob Anderson will be our president still, and Jerry Sperling will be our vice president, and Garrett Jones will remain our secretary. Nick Sumner will remain our golf committee chair. Greta Gilman will be our land committee chair person. Sally Lodato, recreation committee chair. Jennifer Ogden, development and volunteer committee chair. Kevin Brownlee, urban forestry tree committee chair. Finance will remain with Bob Anderson. And Riverfront Park committee will remain with Jerry Sperling for this year. 
There are three lucky park board members that do not have the leadership position as chair, but will in the future. So look forward to that. We discussed opportunities for growth as well as um, good things that happened this year. And we um, submitted that report to our president and we'll be working on our um, improvements, do-betters, challenges in the March retreat. So that is my report for today. Oh. Do you want to do the motion for the officers? I would love to. Thanks, Barb. <laughs> so for the officers this year, I, so, I, I would like to make the motion that they accept their leadership positions. If I need to call them out again, I can. You're fine. Hopefully they all said yes. They did we a week ago. So I'll second the motion. Thank you. Oh, all in favor. <laughs> wow, I, this is why I'm not president. <laughs> You're doing great. Ever, any discussion? No abstentions and definitely no no's. So we're good to go. It passes with flying colors. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. Thanks, Barb. Um, the proposed committee assignments for 2024, there's really only been two changes that have been brought to my attention. Um, Doug Kelly will be moving to golf from Riverfront Park, and I will be moving from golf to Riverfront Park. Yeah. So we... Welcome we you. Kind of just a little flip-flop there. Um, that isn't always set in stone. I mean, if, if somebody still wants to make a change, let me know. We can work through it. But as, as Barb said, the chairs will remain the same. And so far, everybody else seems to be very happy with their committee assignments. All right. We will move then to Fiona. And we have, under our special discussion items, we have the 2023 communications recap. Thank you, Bob. Park Board. Pleased to return to you, as we do every February, with our 2023 look back at our communication efforts for the, over the past year. Thanks to Sarah for running our slide deck today. You did get an update um, at your uh, retreat in the fall, so some of this may feel a little bit repetitive, but we wanted to be sure to recapture everything from last year. Oh, that's okay. That's the that's the next one. I'll start diving in just a little bit um, because some of these slides are going to feel a little bit repetitive from the fall anyway. So I wanted to remind everybody of our team. It's certainly not just me. I get the pleasure of speaking with you today, but there's a team of uh, folks that work with us. So Amy Lindsay with Riverfront Park Committee, who's our programming and marketing manager over Riverfront, and her colleague Regan, who supports that work. And then we work with Josh as well on the marketing side for Parks and Rec. We can't forget our agency, DH. Um, they're integral into the work we do, and they do a lot of work with their advertising buying, so a lot of the regional reach we have is because of them. And then we also work collaboratively with the city communications team and uh, bounce ideas off of each other and find ways to cross-promote and collaborate. And thanks, perfect, next slide. Just a reminder, too, of our purpose. These are the things that we come back to time and again. Uh, we really are focused on growth and ensuring that we're growing um, programs in alignment with the department's goals for growth and making sure that programs and spaces are being utilized. We work to make sure that our community feels informed and engaged, that they understand projects that are impacting them in ways that are available to engage with us and use uh, their tax dollars. Um, this is a big one, trust, just ensuring that people feel like parks and recreation are good stewards of taxpayer dollars and investing in the best interest of the community based on their feedback. And finally, partnerships. We are always looking to find ways to grow our partnerships and collaborators because we certainly don't exist in a bubble, and it's so important that we work with others who are doing the same kind of work we are. Next slide. So the images aren't showing up here. Hmm. We're going to roll with it. We'll send this out electronically anyway. <laughs> All you're missing are just a few screenshots, so it's really, it's, it's nothing um, important, but just capturing some of the print and digital ads and site signs that we engaged with over the year. So we rely a lot on the Inlander as one of our main marketing tools, um, but we also have so many properties, and so we're constantly utilizing those for site signage, um, including banners about hiring and engaging in our recreation surveys, that type of thing. And our quarterly activity guide ads can't be undervalued either. Next slide. 
talk a little bit about some of our direct mail. Um, we're lucky to have utility bill inserts available to us, and those go out twice a month or twice a year to um, all utility bill customers. It's about 81,000 homes. Riverfront also sends out a separate postcard in June to certain households to try and target some key um, lift for their activation or for their attractions and have had great luck with that. If you heard the Riverfront Park Committee report, you'll see there's great success there. And our activity guide, Jen and her team put together such a great guide and helped get it out into the community. It's distributed to about 125,000 125, copies are distributed over the, over the year. Um, and you'll see them when you go to your grocery and convenience stores, your libraries, your community centers. And we also have a mailing list of people that those go to. Next slide. We spend quite a bit of our time on earned media because it's free and it reaches a lot of people and it's very important. And uh, here are just a few highlights of stories that we got over the year. Um, you'll see some trends there, but we had about 730 million impressions across print, broadcast, and radio. There's some great pictures there when I send this out, you'll see of planting Duncan Gardens and people enjoying the holidays in, um, at Riverfront Park and just the, the community joy that you feel from a lot of these stories is, is pretty cool. Next slide is focused on social media. We, um, as you may remember last year, we won number six nationally for parks and recreation agencies in terms of followers and engagement. So not just the number of people that follow you, but the ways that, and the numbers in which, with which they engage with you. Um, that report hasn't come back out for this year, so I don't have the numbers to report, but our social media remains really strong. Uh, Josh and Regan just do an incredible job of monitoring trends and adapting, finding content that's compelling to people. You'll see we have 123,000 followers across our platforms with great growth over the past year, 46,000 clicks to learn more and register. That's 130% growth this year. And that's, that's wow. a huge number of people that are finding our content compelling enough to wanna click and say, yeah, I wanna know more about that. So I'm really proud of our team. I think that's about compelling images, compelling programming, compelling words, getting them in front of the right eyes. People that might not be aware of our programs otherwise, we're buying select ad space on social media so that things pop up if you don't know you're looking for us. Um, and so we had about a 2.5 million post to reach. Um, that's just a lot of eyeballs mm -hmm. seeing our great content. And of course, we have the easiest job in the world because there's so many great things happening, we just get to talk about it. So all the credit goes to our, to our programming and space management teams. Um, next, web, next is uh, just a quick look at our website. The city website is an incredible tool. It gets about our, our pages alone in Parks and Rec get about 1.6 million web visits. Um, golf alone got over 100,000 wow. web visits. Those tea times are pretty popular from what I hear. But Riverfront also consistently year round gets a lot of views. And then Aquatics, 81,000 views in just a couple, you know, a nine week window or so. So. That page is very, very popular, obviously. I'm proud of our recreation activity guide numbers. A lot of people landed on that page. Josh created a special landing page that changes seasonally, and that's allowed us to track what, how people are coming and why, where they're landing on that page from. And so, and then they're spending six minutes reading the guide electronically on average. That's a good amount of time. They're not just clicking and leaving. So the engagement on that, on that activity guide is strong. You'll see some of our most popular blogs, those darn pine beetles. Um, but what I'm really proud of our team here is they found a way to, people were wanting to know, like, what do I need to know about pine beetles? Not just in our parks, but like in my yard. So we created a, a blog. We've got so many subject matter experts in Parks and Rec, and we love to, to utilize their knowledge to, to share with the community. So it's cool that that was the most popular blog. Our recreation survey was, um, was a big one, too, and then free trees. So pretty cool there. And then our big news releases. Anyone surprised that Manitou Holiday Lights was <laughs> up there? I mean, that's a huge one. But our summer park bench cafe concert series and our tree lighting um, are just showing you that people are looking for fun things to go do. And they're looking to Parks and Rec for those opportunities. But um, the broken playgrounds to be repaired at 16 parks. I wanted to add that because it was a very close tie with Numerica tree lighting. And that really, to me, said that people were interested in that content, that they're feeling like, you know, my neighborhood park slide is broken, for example. And wow, that's going to be repaired. And so there's, there's definitely some community interest in that. And that was promising given uh, our next topic of the levy, right? Uh, next slide is about digital marketing. We do some, some dedicated email blasts out with a really good open rate of about 34%. National op average open rate's about 21%. So a nice strong open rate there and then a click-through rate of about twice as much as the average national click-through rate. 
We've got strong lists there. We also use Spokane Public Schools, makes available for purchase access to their student lists and parent lists. And so through their service, we do email out to them as well. And then we do a targeted Google search by. This is for things people don't know where the answer to, like fun things to do with my kids this weekend or uh, you know, best place to go for a hike. And so we do some targeted searches just to make sure that we're popping up and top of mind. Uh, video and photo assets. We've dedicated quite a bit of our budget this past year, past couple of years, to building up our photo libraries, our video libraries. We haven't, because our budget is what it is, and it's it's a great budget, we just have spread it out over a few years to build up these videos so that we can produce some 30-second spots and some other content for social and for streaming. Um, but I'm proud of the work that our teams have done to really capture the feel of what it's like, the experience of being in our parks, being in our programs. I'm excited to share this with you. And then we also did golf course flyovers that really capture the beauty of our courses. And yeah, nice. yeah, we're excited to share those more. Those just came out towards the end of the year. So watch for more of those to come. Um, almost done. Sponsorships and activations. Riverfront just really blew it out of the water with great sponsorship. Um, revenue generation was up by 6% for those. As you know, because you attended a lot of them, we cut a lot of ribbons this year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's great. We love celebrating those it's so important to commemorate those, those moments. Um, and we're trying to be out at community booths and, of course, supporting the work of the DVC and the DVCAC. That's so important. And finally, um, our streaming and TV buy. We're so lucky, shout out to Cable 5, that we have an in-house TV. This group is so talented, and I can't wait to continue to work with them more. They're incredible storytellers. They care passionately about the work. They understand what Parks and Rec does. So we love utilizing their talent in-house. We also do some broadcast and streaming TV buys for golf. Um, pretty targeted to some golf programming like the Masters, but also evening TV news. And we do the same with Riverfront Recreation. We have a weekly TV buy for KHQ that goes out most months of the year. We have a streaming buy, but you'll see about 7 million TV and streaming impressions with a, you know, a fairly small ad buy. And thanks to DH, they do a great job helping us package those in, in the most meaningful way. Quick look ahead to 2024 when you look at our priorities. Um, if we'll just skip a couple slides ahead. Yeah, just one more. So you'll see a lot of the same themes we've been focusing on the last couple of years. Obviously, the levy, the educational part of that's going to be a big focus for us this year. We've also got Expo 50 happening. So those two, I think, will align well in terms of a lot of community outreach and sharing those messages. For golf, that will be a, those will continue to be focus areas with junior and beginner golf, making sure those barriers are reduced for people to come and give it a try. Our rentals, uh, Regan has done a wonderful job working with our web team to make rentals even more enticing. Really clear visuals, easy to see information and booking for Riverfront that we're going to start to try on the, rec on the um, par other parks, out park side. And um, some continued you know, programming promotion there. Thank you for your time. I ran through that very quickly. If you have any questions, happy to answer them. Thank you, Fiona, and your wonderful team. Yeah, great you team. You make great parks team. great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I only have one question. Please. You got an award for that. Didn't you get some sort of a plaque or award for your ranking? No, we didn't. No? No. They, well, they sh um, maybe we have to make our own. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Weird. No, I just thought for sure that, you know, why not? Well, so we'll, we'll just have to figure out who's... Yeah. Yeah. You just got the Jerry Sperling Award. <laughs> yeah, yes. that means go. more yes. to us, Jerry, yeah. than anything else. <laughs> so anyway, we'll have to talk to the we'll powers talk. that be. <laughs> That's they right. Are. Okay. Thanks, Fiona. Thank you. Always great. Thank you. So you're just going to move into the levy one then? Sure. If everyone's ready, yeah. Ready Thank to. you, Fiona. Thank you. So at, the, at your seat, you'll see the one sheet that you've been given this before via email, but we just wanted you to have a hard copy available. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to spend a few minutes today running through the... The uh, outreach plan for education only, obviously not related to any involvement that a PAC may have. Um, if you don't mind, Sarah, pulling up the presentation. I wish Nick was with me today, um, but Garrett, of course, can help pitch hit for some of the park planning perspective that, um, that they can speak so well to. Okay, let's dive in. 
So a quick reminder about our process. This has been a long-standing community engagement process going back all the way to February of 21 when we started that robust outreach that gathered about 5,000 community inputs. Um, that, Of course, that incredible community input is what formed our park plan that was adopted in June of 2022. The investment program that has been formed to fund and support a lot of those key priorities and the foundation of a, an executive team to help guide those next steps. So where we are today, now that, it, now that we have the, the ballot resolution and we know when our date is of August, it's our informational outreach campaign. So we've really divided it into two phases to help us under kind of better communicate, you know, there's kind of a quieter phase, like with fundraising, right, a quieter phase, and then a little more robust phase. So that, that quieter planning phase where we're still doing a lot of activity is happening through April, and then um, the horns really come out May, June, and July. Next slide. This is a reminder, again, just of the incredible outreach that was done. I think as we're talking with the community, I think one of the questions will be, you know, how was this plan formed? I didn't get to give input. I think we really can look back to the incredible month, a year and a year and a half worth of outreach that happened, and those 5,000 uh, residents that gave us input through a statistically valid survey. That will really be the backbone for why we're here, what this plan means for us. Next slide. As we've been talking the last couple of months with city council, with community members, with some of you, with the DVCAC, here are a couple of themes that have emerged in terms of our outreach for some priority talking points. One of them, of course, is gonna be, um, in marketing we call it the WIFM, right? What's in it for me? So. We've developed, and you'll see on the next slide here in just a moment, cut sheets that will be for each neighborhood. So when we go to councils or when we're talking to somebody, we can hand them a sheet that says what's happening within that 10 minute walk for me and my parks. And then cut sheets for districts too, because we know the impacts will be felt. I might not live right next to Audubon Park, but I drive by it every day and I'm mm -hmm. gonna take my kids there on occasion. So I need to know what's happening kind of in my drive radius too. And then the big picture, why is this costing this much money? Because it's this big of a project, right? It is really citywide in neighborhoods, but it's big. So we're wanting to try and make sure people understand the scope as it impacts them, but also the bigger picture for Spokane. And then we keep hearing, you know, caring for what we have is so important, taking good care of city-owned assets, and then the safety and maintenance pieces. And then a point we keep hearing as well, well, doesn't parks get 8% of the city budget? And you all know, you know, we don't. We get 8% of a general fund, which is a portion of the city budget. So really it's 2.3% of the city budget, which, um, which is wonderful, but it is only able to do, you know, as much as we are. Helping people kind of just understand the current financial picture so that it's accurate information. There's other themes that are emerging, but those kind of just keep rising to the top. Of course, I welcome your feedback as we're going through about, well, keep this in mind and make sure, you know, there's gonna be a lot um, to, of information to kind of suss through, but we wanted to kind of have some key thoughts in our head. Next slide. Wanted to go over, oh, this is one of the cut sheets that Nick put, Nick put together. A very quick look, it will be, you know, formatted and branded, but the idea is that we will really break down what each park will get so people have clear expectations. Over a 20 year period, we will have to remind folks some of these may not be seen right away, but it is, it is um, part of the plan. Next slide. Wanted to break down, again, kind of that staff city-led information-only campaign and run through a few elements that you'll see. I've broken them down into four categories, kind of like our marketing report that we just went through. So the first category um, for the next slide is events and activations. So of course, we'll be out at all the neighborhood councils. There's about 30 of them over, the next, you know, over that phase two. Um, we've started a little bit. Nick went to community assembly, I think was it last week, and shared with um, representatives of each neighborhood council. So we're starting to get the word out. I know he's presented to Brown's neighborhood. So it will, it will be rolling out over time but we will hit these. A lot of business organizations, service clubs, I'm sure you have, we have, a long, we have a long list of groups we hit, but if you have ideas, you know, that's where we would really love to make sure we're hitting all of the targets. We'll have booths at community festivals, events, think expo, you know, we'll be out in the community a lot of things over the summer, just as we were with the master plan. We'll host at least one online webinar, um, like the school district has done, that's been very informational and helpful. Coffees and chats too, I mean, who doesn't want to come sit down with Garrett, have mm -hmm. coffee and talk about the levy? Yeah. So we'll have yeah. some of those opportunities as well. Next slide. 
The next category I would think of as kind of that digital piece. So of course the website's standing. We're, we're revamping the website now that we have some concrete things. We're adding some pictures and doing some new capabilities with things you can click on. Um, but that website will be very robust by the time we hit um, early spring. Social media, of course, will really take full gear um, in, in the spring as well. Blogs, videos, e-newsletter. I mean, the things we do anyway as Parks and Rec, we will be um, engaging with. We've got great TV screens at Parks facilities, and then we've got that Great Riverfront Park electric billboard. I haven't asked John yet, but okay. Oh, that's, yep. <laughs> That's his yes, I like that. Uh, so we'll use those, you know, those great park assets to help get the word out about what the levy is. Next slide. The collateral and mail, obviously you've got your one sheet, um, but we'll have those other cut sheets. We've got an FAQ that's in review right now, activity guide ads, utility bill inserts, postcards, banners in our parks, posters. You know, the beauty of the timing of this, and I know, Doug, you brought it up at the last retreat, people are in our parks in the summer, right? So our goal with that phase two, you know, we're in May, we're catching people before they get out of school, and everybody kind of goes into summer mode. So we'll have some time there, but then we'll also have that time in the summer when people are at our pools and in our parks and in our recreation mm -hmm. programs. So lots of ears to be able to capture, um, to share with this information with. Next slide. And the final category is that earned media and advertising. You know, we've got some great news stories to share. You look back just a few months with the playgrounds that were renovated and what those spaces look like and how we're looking to do more of that. Partner channels uh, like Spokane Public Schools has offered us, you know, to be able to utilize just like we do um, for other programs, to be able to utilize some of their partner channels. We'll be able to do a small print TV and radio buy with, with our existing budget. And of course, the, the great talent of Cable 5. So these, this is kind of our general ed for education and outreach plan um, as it aligns now. We're always open to ideas and shifts, um, but this is as it stands. Looking at the next slide, we wanted to talk a little bit about the roles that volunteers, such as yourselves, our friends group, other interested parties can play. So the next slide, we tried to break it down a little bit. We don't want you to feel the burden of having to go out to neighborhood councils. You know, we, we as staff will do that. We can do that, right, as, as staff. So we'll be sh out sharing a lot of those presentations we'll have. Um, but here are some areas where we could use your help. Uh, if you want to come and work some booths with us, we'd love to have you to help answer community questions and meet people and hear things. You can help, as I said earlier, connect us with groups you think we should present information with. You can help share our informational messages on social media by just clicking share and sharing that those key messages and images. You can um, you know, share collateral information that we'll have with people in your circle, family and friends. Invite people to our webinars, our coffees and chats. Help with ideas for people that w might want to share why you know, the levy is important to them and um, why, this w why this work matters. Things we will really count on you for are activities that we as staff you know, just legally can't do. Um, so PAC activities may, of course, without the use of any city resources, include things like this that, again, we can't do. So it's the steering committees, the recruiting volunteers, the fundraising for those expensive advertising, mailers, sign, those type of elements, um, writing letters to the editor, social media sharing with that vote yes messaging that wouldn't come from the city, um, posting vote yes signs, rallies, waving on street corners, flyer distribution, door to door. These are the kinds of things, as you know, that, um, that a PAC may want to be involved with that as, since we can't, we would just really love your help in those areas. Mm -hmm. Garrett, do you have anything to add on that front? You did awesome. No, that's no, great. great. Um, just a quick next slide. We are working on a volunteer toolkit that we'll have available by April. It will have this information, the FAQs, the cut sheets, some sample social media messages, posters if you wish to go post them at your grocery stores, that type of thing, and then just some legal reminders, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of that, that always help me when I need, mm -hmm. when I have a question. But we'll get that toolkit together for you and get feedback from you about what will be helpful. That's great. Oh, good. Thank you. Well, thank you for working with <laughs> and being our partners in this. It's a heavy, obviously, it's a heavy lift, and we're going to make some adjustments as we go, but we will count on you to, obviously, for guidance, what you think works, what we th you think we could do differently, and we'll just look to be partners in this together. Well, what that provides is one voice, right. which is yeah. really important. Right. Uh, you know, having done levies. Uh, schools so that we're all speaking the same language exactly and then that way there's it just it, it, I don't know it just gives us a calmness because we have that information mm -hmm. um, and we can just uh, relate to the people with whom we're visiting isn't that true so yeah, yeah. well said thanks yeah thank, thank you Fiona thank you. thank you and this will certainly be a part 
of our agenda at the at the retreat. Oh yeah, yeah. And that happens before phase two kicks off, so we'll be yeah. a little closer to that mm -hmm. that kickoff. So. Perfect timing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well done. Thank Very you so well much, done. Fiona. Well, let's go down to committee reports and urban forestry. We'll start with you, Kevin. Committee met on January 30th. We had a short agenda. Uh, Ted Henshold, uh, he updated us on his street tree inventory and mapping project uh, that will be used to direct future work of urban forestry. Steve Nidolo presented a presentation on balancing tree and turf uh, issues and health on golf courses. There's been great collabor collaboration between those two departments. And uh, we also got an update just that the uh, $6 million federal grant is in final iterations for the work plan and that will be available soon. And the next meeting will be March 5th at 4.15. Thank you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Thank Land you. Committee, Greta. Land Committee did not meet in January. Uh, our next meeting, which we will hold, will be 3.30 p.m. on March 6th at the Hive Events Room A and also virtually via WebEx. Thanks. Thank you, Greta. Um, Rec Committee, Sally, I, I know Sally was hoping to be able to call in. I don't know. Right. I wasn't sure that she was going to be able to, and she was having technical issues hmm. um, on the day of the meeting, uh, so I offered to run the meeting for her and can report if she's not here. I, I'm not sure if calling user is her, but Jennifer, I will. Yeah. Oh. Jennifer. Jennifer, go ahead and do that. I'm okay. Home, okay, great. And Thank I you. just got home. Yeah, if you can take over, that would be All perfect. right. Thank you, please. Thank All you. Right. So I'll pretend to be Sally here. Um, and uh, we did meet on January 31st, um, and it was mostly the Jennifer Pappage show. We did not have any public comment or action items, but Jennifer Pappage had a, two great items. One was the Community Center Grant Program to report on, and then our Recreation Annual Report. So take it away, Jennifer. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Um, <laughs> yeah, just a quick touch on the Community Center Grant Program. We are going to reopen that up uh, next week, and so we, that was very successful last year, so we are going to put that out again to the community centers as a part of Cisco. so we can do that, and um, it's just adding a little extra fund for their capital for their capital expenses that they have, um, so they don't have to take those out of their budget if they're awarded for that grant, so... We're happy to do that for them. And then working on our Recreation 2023 year-end report, this is always so much fun because it's just all good things that we like to celebrate. And the pictures say it all. I love all the pictures on here. It's very heartwarming to see all the people that are out enjoying our recreation programs thanks to our wonderful recreation team. Um, just the highlight of the numbers down below, the number of programs that offered, it was a 4% increase over last year, which was really great. We had a 20% increase in athletic teams over last year. That number just keeps on going up and up, but a lot of that has to do with the addition of the new middle schools that we're ad able to get into with our volleyball program, so mm -hmm. that helps with those numbers as well. Um, program participants, we saw an 18% increase over 2022. Um, open swim participation in athletic complex bookings, we did see a little bit of a decrease, but that was to be expected. Uh, we altered some of the times on our open swims and then uh, decreased capacity a little bit due to some code regulations that we had to fall in line with, uh, new updated ones. And then with our athletic complex bookings, sometimes that happens based on when um, users switch from inside to outside or when they start using their own facilities. So next slide, please. Okay, so the Corbin Arts Center had an awesome year this year, celebrating their 125th anniversary. They were able to do such amazing things to bring new, fresh awareness to the facility. Um, 2,000 part program participants were in that Corbin Arts Center this summer, over 340 programs. That was over the whole year, not just this summer. That would be a lot. Um, celebrating the 125th anniversary, the Age of Elegance event, which I know a bunch of you went to, was such a heavy lift for staff to do, transforming um, finger painting and water color classrooms into this elegant, fully furnished home. Mm -hmm. um, it was quite a lift, but it was great for small businesses that participated. It brought a whole bunch of different people into the art center that wouldn't have awareness of it before. Each one of them grabbed our activity guides and uh, you know, we're kind of seeing that in the increase in participation. It, the numbers are still the same, but people are registering faster for the programs and they're filling up faster. So we would like to think that some of that had to do with the 125th anniversary awareness. And also with that, something that was super cool 
during the 125th anniversary when we're celebrating all this, the Governor's Mansion Foundation donated two pieces of art, um, George Washington pieces of art that were like at the time period 125 years ago when uh, the center was, and now they're hanging in the center. So uh, please go by and see them. They're stunning pieces of art that we get to now um, take care of and have in the center for people to enjoy. So that's pretty dang cool. Next slide, please. Okay, athletics, again, pictures say a thousand words here. Our athletics programs just continue to increase and increase. Um, 450 adult volleyball teams, 313 adult softball teams, 50 flag football teams, 49 cornhole teams, and 26 youth NFL flag football teams all add into that team total uh, that we showed you on the other side that was a 20% increase over last year. So um, the Josh Oaks and Chris Aware and Casey just do a wonderful job with that program. Next slide, please. All right, outdoor recreation. We love these pictures, especially the snow pictures of the kiddos up there. Um, 1,204 people served over 133 outdoor programs. They do such a wonderful job of like snowshoeing, kayaking, stand up paddle boarding, hiking, really showing the community all the amazing things that are at their fingertips to use. We show them how to do it, then they can go out and do it on their own with their family and friends as well. Um, they do a great partnership with Washington State Parks Boating Program where uh, they serve no youth in the Northeast Spokane by providing free kayak and water safety education, and then each uh, person that participated had a free life jacket that they got to take home. Oh, that's great. Next slide, please. Therapeutic recreation. Alice Bush and her team did such an amazing job this year of trying really new and different and creative things. Um, one of those you'll see in the upper right hand corner is sailing. They partnered with Dog Smile and at Ponderay Lake and they did sailing with therapeutic recreation participants and it was just outstanding and we're going to definitely repeat that again this year. Um, over 1,700 people participated in TRS programs. Um, the new joint use agreement, which you all approved with Spokane Valley, has really expanded the programs of their painting programs and their cycling programs. That partnership is really blossoming, so we're really excited to report upon that. And again, the which is going on now, the TRS ski program continues to just impact lives and families and providing recreation for people that wouldn't otherwise be able to glide on the snow. So they do a wonderful job. Next slide, please. Wellness and enrichment, you'll see down at the bottom left, that is the podium, and that is one of our run, jump, and throw events that we just did recently last month. We're doing another one in a couple weeks in February, and that's in partnership with Spokane Sports and Skyhawks. Um, a total of 4,152 youth and adults enrolled in wellness and enrichment programs, and that includes our partnerships with Skyhawks and USTA. Um, the longevity, the longevity Fit program that we do, the enhanced fitness for our aging adults is wonderful. Um, we even were doing some measuring on that program where people are able to you know, tie their shoes without you know, assistance or they're less falls or they're more mobile, feeling more independent. So that program is really changing lives of the people that participate in that. That goes on at the Shadow Library and also at Southwest, or Southside Senior Center. That's where that program goes on. And again, uh, with that program over there, with the podium, not only with the run, jump, and throw, but 200 other youth were able to enjoy the podium with our badminton camps and our Merkel Summer Day camps that also did field trips to the podium this summer. So next slide, please. Our aquatics is amazing. That picture right in the middle is all of our 184 seasonal staff that is employed by Josh Oaks and his team. Um, wonderful summer job for all of the youth in our area to partake in, including we had 52 new lifeguards this year that were certified as lifeguards. Um, 3,649 swim lessons were provided and 1,000 127,907 open swim participants. And we expect those numbers, especially with the swim lessons, to increase in 2024 as we're expanding our lesson opportunities. Next slide, please. And this is just a thank you. Thank you to all of the recreation team for all that they do. I get to sit up here and sing their praises, but they're actually the ones that do all the amazing things and work. So we could not do it without all of them and their outstanding efforts. So if you see them, please say thank you. Well, thank you, Jennifer Pappage and Ryan and all the team. You all make us look really good. And this is, you know, the heart of what we do, providing all these programs to the public. And it's just a terrific job. 
Yes, thank you. I hope we have some of those numbers for the levy information. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Fiona has all the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she's already oh, they are fantastic. So the Recreation Committee next meeting will be March 6th at 515 in the Hive in Event Room A. Thank you. And Jennifer graciously uh, asked if we would want to use the Corbin House for the site of our fall retreat. She oh, yeah. suggested that the other day, and thank I you. wish we would have thought of it sooner, but thank you, Jennifer. Yes. Wow. All right, we'll move to Riverfront Park and Jerry. And we're going to have John Moog join. Uh, first of all, we did have a consent agenda item that went through, and uh, Barry's not here, but it's on a suspension bridge, finally being finished. Uh, and he just does a yeoman's job. I mean, that, you know, we learned more than we needed to know about corbels, but anyway, <laughs> we, <laughs> uh, I, I just look at all the finite things. That bridge is going to be safe for at least another hundred years. Uh, and that was something that, that we learned uh, through that process. It was falling apart, folks. Uh, we could have had a real rough summer this summer. Uh, so anyway, thanks and kudos to him. So what John is bringing uh, to us right now is the uh, superlative group, Inc. But what it's regarding, folks, is the fact that, remember, we have a uh, Inovia skate ribbon, which was our first naming right, if you remember. And you can think of all the great things that are being done there. I mean... Think of what they did at Christmas. You know, there was party after party. There were free times. Uh, the skate ribbon, uh, even in crummy, uh, rainy nights, uh, everybody was out. You know, a little bit of rain didn't even hurt anybody. But anyway, we wanted to bring uh, this item to the board uh, because it will be an action item, but something that we're doing that's quite different and we need to make sure that you understand exactly how it's going to process for the coming year. Thanks, John. Thank you, Jerry, and good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, great to speak with you again. I'm here today to uh, brief the contract with the Superlative Group. Um, next page, please. So a little bit about, about the background and how did we get here and the why. So first, um, we started pursuing naming rights sponsorship with the uh, Numerica Credit Union and through Brett Sports back in 2018. And that was an initiative to really bring better cost recovery to our programs and appeal to the community in a much larger way and which incorporates the community's involvement into our programs. Um, and so we always contemplated that we'd come back to the pavilion at some point and name the pavilion. In fact, if you've been with the board for a long time, we've been talking about it for a long time. And uh, the reason we've been talking about it for a long time is because of the pandemic. We had to take a pause uh, after the pandemic between uh, 2020 and 2022, where we just saw the market crash. The investment in naming rights sponsorship opportunities wasn't great. And we had to figure out where do we go next. So, uh, but at the end of 2022, we started seeing the market improve and uh, staff decided to go out on it on our own and see if we can find a naming rights partner just in-house. And so we actually did. We did it twice. Uh, we released the RFP. In fact, the RFP is still on our city's procurement webpage looking for that naming rights partner. And what we discovered is that the regional market is, or the local market right now, is not in a position to support additional sponsorships uh, at, in Spokane. And so that compels us to go out and look at regionally or even nationally for naming rights uh, partners. And so this brings us to the superlative group. Uh, we released a bid uh, just last uh, April, uh, to, and we've selected a couple par and two partners uh, actually bid it. We released that RFP opportunity twice. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we included any local agency that wanted to participate in that opportunity. Um, of those two bidders, um, we selected the superlative group for their experience, and I'll go over into what their experience is in a second. But first, I want to thank the board, uh, the members of the selection committee. Um, uh, 
you can see the names listed on uh, our own Barb Ritchie. Thank you for participating. Mm -hmm. Fiona behind me. Uh, and then also my other colleagues, Amy Lindsay uh, and Regan Farmer, also participated in the selection committee. And uh, we selected the superlative group based on their experiences or qualifications. Next slide, please. So the superlative group is an Ohio-based company. They've been in business well over 30 years. And in that 30 years, they've achieved quite the record. This is just a snapshot of what they've done. But they've worked with both county and parks, uh, and city parks, municipalities. Uh, and they've also with, worked with organizations that have um, performance venues. And so we felt the collection of that experience was very aligned with what we're trying to do in terms of where a community we're a community park, we have a performance venue, that seems like a great fit, uh, and uh, they have the reach uh, and the connections uh, to be able to connect us to those regional and national partners. So what is this agreement? This is actually going to be a two-phase agreement. So this first phase is just for to find that naming rights partner. Um, it is to find that business who wants to help name the pavilion. And in this contract, uh, they will earn a $5,000 per month retainer over an 18-month term, uh, plus uh, travel expenses and reimbursement for travel expenses up to $10,000. Once they actually find a partner, we will enter into an, a second agreement to pay the commission on that uh, on that, on the sale that they made, we learned. This is a lesson learned from our Numerica um, and Brett Sports uh, relationships that we had. We didn't initially do that with them, and we had to backtrack and memorialize that agreement. So what we're doing is identifying it early in the process and saying this is how it's going to work. Um, and so what we'll see here is what when I come back to. Assuming that you approve this contract today, I'll come back to you hopefully earlier than 18 months and say, hey, good news, I have a partner. I have a partner contract and I have a commission contract. <laughs> and then the, uh, you will make to be able to make the decision on both of those contracts at that time. Uh, so we did negotiate uh, this contract uh, in front of you today does memorialize the commission agreement in that contract if we do find a naming rights partner. So the, uh, the initial term of any naming rights partner contract will be 17%, uh, which is less than the Brett Sports Agreement, if you remember from the Numerica Credit Union, which was 20%. And then for any renewals uh, of the naming rights partner, uh, it'll, the commission will be reduced to 15%. So this has been the best negotiated deal that we believe we can find, and this is what we're offering to the board today. Do you have any questions? No questions? Oh. All so, right. What I would like to do is, first of all, thank you, John, for uh, bringing this to uh, an explanation, if you will, in revisiting the Brett Sports comparison so that we have that and uh, explaining who superlative really is. Uh, so I would like to put into motion uh, to approve the U.S. Pavilion Sponsorship Sales Agreement with a superlative group, Inc. Do I have a second? Second. All right, it's been seconded by Doug Kelly. We'll put it to the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 This is Sally, aye. Thank you, Sally. All right, with that, it has been seconded and approved. So you are ready to go with superlative. Great. We're Thank looking you. forward to that, John. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One of the things that you will have in your uh, report, and uh, just so you know, we have a recap for January, and lots was taking place then. So, and I think most of us were down at one point or another. We will meet again in March on the 11th at 4 o'clock at the pavilion. So um, anybody who'd like to join us, please do that. With that, Bob, it's all yours. Thank you, Jerry. And thanks to everyone who helped with the superlative group. But looking at some of the places that they've done and their references, they're pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move on to golf with Nick.
All right, golf did meet. We did have three items on the consent agenda. And um, we also asked Steve to come back to the golf committee and do his presentation that he did for urban forestry. It was so nice, we did it twice. Uh, a lot of good information and um, really cool to see that collaboration, especially remembering my, my early times on the board and, and some of the, uh, the issues with trees. It was, a, it was a long, painful conversation many times. So it's really nice to see this real collaborative effort going on. And, and we've seen the benefit over and over and over again and really look forward to that continued collaboration. We also had a discussion about um, flooding at the Qualchin Creek uh, Clubhouse. Um, the frigid temperatures created a, an issue and um, we plan to come back uh, in the next meeting and show you a presentation with pictures of the damage and the cleanup and hopefully the restoration um, will be completed mostly at that point as well. So more to come on that. It was unfortunate. Luckily, we had somebody um, go into the, the clubhouse early the next morning and caught it um, as soon as possibly could be caught. And we had Surf Pro come in and, and they started on it right away. So we were able to mitigate it as much as possible. Uh, Fiona did our marketing update and um, really excited to, to see um, what we were, were able to get out of our marketing last year and what's coming up for 2024. Those flyovers are amazing. If you haven't had a chance to see them, please take the opportunity to go see those flyovers online. Um, also, our past sales were extremely strong this year so far, and, and so that's really exciting going into the 2024 golf season. Um, we're also going to be attending the, the golf show um, that's upcoming here, I believe, uh, next weekend, mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact. So um, hopefully everybody can stop by and say hi to to the um, representatives from the golf department. And um, I think that's all we had. Superintendent's report, of course, we're still not open. It's still winter, unfortunately. Um, but hopefully the weather will continue to, to move towards the warm and sunny uh, side of things, and we can get going on playing golf. Uh, our next meeting uh, will be the March 12th at 8 a.m. at the Hive, I think, Room A. Thank you, Nick. Yep. The Finance Committee. Oh, Bob, I yeah. do have a, a clarifying oh, thank question you. on the on the Qualchan incident, and I'm just wondering in terms of these rare but unique issues like sub-zero weather, do we have any kind of process or procedures established in the future to prevent, to make sure that our facilities are in fact protected during these events. We do and we're investigating exactly what happened in this one. It was in the, the restroom area, which does have a separate heating source from the restaurant area mm -hmm. of what exactly happened in this case. And it wasn't a line above in the ceiling. Um, so we had a lot of ceiling insulation, as you can imagine. But yes, and as far as periodic checks, because some of these buildings where we don't either winterize them or um, need to have those daily checks and to make sure that the heat is working. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for the question, Doug. Appreciate it. The uh, Finance Committee did not meet. Hard to believe we didn't, but the next scheduled meeting will be March 12th at 3 p.m. in the Liberty Park Library Events Room and virtually via WebEx. DVC, Jennifer. All right. So the, the Development and Volunteer Committee, as well as the Citizen Advisory Committee of the DVC met on January 17th uh, via WebEx and in person. And um, we had a, a little bit of public comment. Uh, we had a mother-daughter pair who were interested in forming not yet a friends group for Grant Park, but there to represent the community garden at uh, Grant Park. And by virtue of being a community garden, they have their eyes and ears on the ground as to what's happening there. Um, and they were very enthusiastic, and I'm hoping they will be submitting a letter, Garrett, to you about having a seat on this CAC. Uh, for that. Also, I wanted to note that Lindsay Shaw had moved up from the Citizen Advisory Committee to the full Development and Volunteer Committee of the Park Board, and so it's great to have her participate in that way, and that Paul Krupp was also in attendance representing the community assemblies that day. So we had a number of 
our CAC members exchange information, and that really is the heart of what the Citizen Advisory Committee is all about. Friends of the Bluff uh, with the fire reduction thinning project, Friends of Coeur d'Alene Park, Lee Williams with the coordinated legislative ask that we are doing with them as a park department, uh, as well as their terrific uh, year in review and their farmer's market activity. The Friends of Riverfront Park is uh, moving ahead, I think, uh, looking at that opportunity with uh, Stepwell, but also uh, with uh, restarting the Friends of Riverfront Park as a friends group. And Friends of Palisades, Paul Lindholt talked about bringing on the kids, the goats, for mm -hmm. summer fire reduction. Um, and then, of course, Community Assembly, Liz Lindsay Shaw. Uh, we had an update from Kelly Brown about the calendar for Expo 50. That celebration is calendar is being fleshed out and will be um, referred to soon in all kinds of public media. And then we had some membership vacancies that we talked about on that, um, on that body. So then the next subject was the levy uh, update and Fiona's perfect presentation today uh, indicates what's going to be happening from the educational and outreach aspect. And I also want to thank her for addressing that all the way back to February of 21 when we started the master plan and all that input because the CAC, DVC and CAC did have some input from the public about concerns about not having public input prior to going to city council asking to be on the ballot. And it's simply that it hasn't happened yet. We have started, of course, with public input through the master plan and that process is naturally built into what we do as a park board and park staff. And that process will continue with all of these um, community meetings and uh, cut sheets and all these opportunities to sit down and have coffee and exchange information as a part of the outreach toward educating the public as to why we need um, a levy. So that is yet in front of us still. And so there will be lots of opportunities for the public to reach out to us and say, hey, this is what I notice is needed in my park. And uh, so we look forward to being able to publicize when those opportunities are. The next meeting of the DVC will be on the 21st of this month at Liberty Park at 4 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Now we move to reports. Um, President's report. I want to thank Chair Barb Ritchie, Kevin Brownlee, Doug Kelly, and Sally Lodato for their efforts to contact all board members regarding officer nomination and committee assignments. I will send out an email to the board members with current assignments. I might wait a month to see if we have any further changes, but, but we'll do so. Uh, thanks to our board members for their thoughts regarding agenda items for the March board retreat. Jerry, Jennifer, and I met with the park's leadership team on February 6th to discuss the agenda for the retreat. Sarah has sent out an email to save the date of March 29th at Liberty Park once again for the retreat, updated information to follow. And in closing, thanks to the board for placing your trust in Jerry and I to provide leadership for the board and parks into the Expo Plus and the levy year. It will be a welcome challenge. And again, thank you all for your trust. So we will move now to the liaison reports. Conservation Futures, Nick. Uh, Conservation Futures did not meet. Okay. Parks Foundation, Barb? Parks Foundation did not meet. Our next meeting is February 28th. Boy, we're moving right along through these. <laughs> and no city council report, so we'll go with uh, Director Garrett. Are you going to start us and introduce I'm just gonna, our guest speaker? I, I just want to introduce Al Vorderberg. Al. You know, <laughs> the longest name in Parks and Recreation. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to give us our report today. And really no introduction was needed, Al. No. 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 None. <laughs> this Although is great. Although Garrett did promise me walk-up music that <laughs> uh -oh. did not happen, so. Wow. We're lucky we have oh. microphones. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My friend's up in Channel 5. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Well, it's been a minute since I'm, I've been up here, so thanks for the opportunity to stand in for the acting director who's filling in for the interim <laughs> whatever. So it's, uh, it's just nice to be up here. So, uh, 
a lot of really cool stuff happening in parks and recreation right now. So it's just fun to see all my comrades back here and, and all the stuff that their teams are working on on a daily basis. So let's look at some of the highlights. Uh, opening day of adult softball registration. I mentioned from uh, Chris Aware the other day, she brought in 53 teams in the very first day of registration. Oh my Something in the order of $30,000 in revenue in one single day. So it just shows the popularity of, a, of a, a pretty awesome program that just keeps growing and growing under her leadership and, and a, a part of the recreation team for sure. Um, I think Jen mentioned some of the podium activities in her annual report. There's a big track and field event coming up, run, jump, and throw at the podium, and it's another one of those great partnership opportunities with the Spokane Sports and Skyhawks, and that's uh, coming up in a couple weeks on February 28th. Uh, new activity guides are out or now. We have them now, so if you need them, I know there's a bunch in Jen's office. You can stop by if you need some for your coffee club or book group or anything. We'd love to get those out, but more are coming out. Well, the next uh, version of the of the guide will be coming out in mid-March. Uh, golf going on. You, um, Nick mentioned the, the, the flood. I know uh, Mark Poyer's been working on that a lot. That's a big deal. I went out and looked at that myself. It's, it's crazy how much can happen in just a few hours. But his response to that has been amazing. Um, it's a stressful deal, but he's doing a great job leading that effort. Uh, golf and outdoor show is coming up next weekend at the convention center. So again, as Nick mentioned, stop by. Uh, don't go this weekend, it'll be the Ag Show. You might run into some tractors or something. So go next weekend um, to that show. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, the planning department, uh, the BA Clark restroom has been closed uh, three or four years due to massive uh, sewer issues. We finally got that project out to bid. Uh, so hopefully hopefully get that restroom reopened and, there, and Barry's been working on a new project there to revamp that restroom and make it a little more accessible to the public. So um, good news there at B.A. Clark. That's a that's a super popular park with our youth sports field and, and things going on there. Uh, big public meeting next Thursday for park planning. The Make Beacon Hill Public Phase 2 community meeting is uh, this coming Thursday, February 15th at 5.30 p.m. at the Liberty Park Library and online if you're interested in joining that. Also with that group, we broke ground yesterday on an internal project at uh, Coeur d'Alene Park for a new irrigation project, which has long been uh, waiting in that. We've had, it's one of those parks that we manually irrigate during the day, so we have to pay a guy to be there all day and, and you know, irrigate when it's least efficient, the heat of the day. And uh, so that's a project we've been waiting for for a long time. Uh, my friends in operation, uh, the park operations, the seasonal recruitment is going on now. Um, right now, I think uh, Don has a, a booth set up at the Spokane Wedding Expo um, last month that was very popular. She's just doing some amazing things on wedding venue in the park opportunities and really increasing our revenue opportunities there. Urban Forestry uh, recently completed a dead root, uh, tree removals at Coeur d'Alene Park and is working closely with golf on some of their tree management issues, as discussed, uh, that Nick mentioned in the, in the golf report. Uh, Riverfront Park, Skyride's closed for this month for their annual maintenance. The Expo 50 group is working real hard on um, you know, that upcoming, quickly approaching events um, scheduled for later this spring and summer. Um, the Inovia Skate, Inovia, Foundation recently did a, a skate and um, carousel ticket giveaway and gave away 2,000 opportunities a couple Saturdays ago. So mm -hmm. those kind of events are always going on uh, down at the park, of course. But breaking news, um, Bart, um, Jerry, you wanted to have a, an award today. So here there is an award I oh, get cool. to announce that Riverfront Park was just recently voted the best family-friendly spot in the downtown business district. So there's the oh, award. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for that breaking news, John. Still <laughs> called the Jerry Sperling. <laughs> amazing. No, that's great. And finally, uh, the admin, of course, uh, Fiona never takes credit for anything, but she works mm -hmm. so hard on all of this stuff. This mm -hmm. levy thing is that her huge. and Nick are working on, that is the amount huge. of time that goes into this stuff is amazing. 
I want to uh, make sure to shout out to her. And then she's working on the annual report, too. So you, just, you guys get this pretty cool um, product here in a couple of weeks. But the amount of time that goes into just wrangling all of us, it's herding cats to get all of our information <laughs> and the, to get it to you in a, in a timely, beautiful fashion. And uh, just want to shout out to her for that and, and her team and all that great effort. So that's my report. And I guess I don't get an award. I just get to go sit down. So. Well, we'll just give you a round of applause. Yeah. There you go. That's perfect. Yes. Cue the music. Cue the music. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now you can't ask for more. Look at that. <laughs> uh, thank you, Al. I love it. Parks has a staff that a lot of people don't want to take credit that they deserve. Yes. And they certainly deserve it. They work very hard. Thank you all. All right, we have no executive session. Moving down to correspondence, Sarah beat me to it. Um, read this if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing. It shows, at least to me, how well we work you know, with the neighborhoods and, and so on. And I know Lee Williams has talked about it at the DVC meetings, how Court Lane Park, you know, blended or merged together with the farmer's market, but it's, it's nice when somebody takes the time to thank everybody for it. So read it if you haven't, it's, it's good. Anything else that anybody wants to add before we, before we adjourn at 441? Thank you for your leadership. All right, thank you all. Well, and I would just like to thank the committee again. So uh, I'll be happy to serve for you. Thank you. Oh, now I'm going to adjourn at 442. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all.